An Ofsted inspection contributed to the death of head teacher Ruth Perry. That's the conclusion of senior coroner Heidi Connor, delivered yesterday following a five-day inquest in which she heard from family members, school colleagues, the Ofsted inspectors and medical professionals. This is the first time Ofsted has been listed as a contributing factor in the death of a head teacher. Ruth Perry had been head of Caversham Primary School in Berkshire for 13 years when she took her own life in January, ahead of an inspection report being made public which had downgraded the school from outstanding to inadequate based on safeguarding concerns. The school was regraded this summer to good. Her death ignited a national debate about the mental health of school leaders. Ofsted Chief Inspector Amanda Spielman has apologised for the distress that Mrs Perry undoubtedly experienced as a result of our inspection and said that Ofsted was making several changes to help reduce the pressure felt by school leaders. Well, I'm joined now by Ruth Perry's sister, Professor Julia Waters. Um, Julia, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us here on Women's Hour. I'd like to start by getting your reaction to the coroner's verdict that an Ofsted inspection likely contributed to Ruth's death. Um, Thank you for having me on this morning. Um, Clearly, there's no outcome from an inquest that's a, a positive one, if you like. But we were relieved and pleased that the coroner came to the conclusion she came to, that the conclusion that... Everyone who knew Ruth knew already. Um, Ruth wasn't the first head teacher or teacher to take her life after an Ofsted inspection. But as you said, it is the first time that an Ofsted inspection has actually been included on the coroner's form as linked to Ruth's death. And actually, as far as we're concerned, it was the reason for Ruth's death. So I'm hoping that the fact that that has been publicly and officially legally acknowledged will finally make Ofsted make the changes that are needed to make the inspection system reliable, consistent and safe. I'd like to pick out some other bits of what the coroner concluded and and just to get your thoughts. And they said that parts of the inspection lacked fairness, respect and sensitivity and that it was at times rude and intimidating. I mean, that must have been incredibly difficult to hear. Well, it was difficult to hear, but obviously I had heard that from Ruth herself last year. Um, I suppose when, I mean, I've read all of the disclosure evidence that was submitted to the uh, coroner in detail, so that having seen that evidence from all parties it it confirmed but with such brutal realism what ruth had already told us mm. there was always i suppose that niggling doubt that maybe it was just ruth who'd perceived that inspection to be as it was but her colleagues who were there not only witnessed the terrible impact it had on Ruth, but were also profoundly upset and traumatised by the experience themselves. And to read their testimony, to hear them in court talking about the sustained painful levels of stress that they were all under during that inspection, the unpleasant experience of meetings with the inspectors, um, confirmed kind of what I suspected and knew already, that there was something just profoundly wrong mm. with the way that inspection was conducted, but actually with a with a system that allows there to be inspections like that. Well, and the evidence also revealed very little training for inspectors um, mm. to identify and deal with anxiety and distress in school leaders. But Ofsted say that they're now started to develop, to develop training for all the inspectors on recognising and responding to visible signs of anxiety. Is it enough? No, no. I mean, the um, National Director for Education, Christopher Russell gave evidence at the inquest um, during which he repeatedly claimed that Ofsted had always 
been very conscious of the stress that inspections cause and had included training for inspectors in its training materials as sort of central to their training materials. The untruth of that was exposed in the um, inquest. The coroner asked Ofsted to produce these training materials. So I, like the coroner, have seen both the training materials that were used at the time of the inspection at Caversham Primary, this time last year, and the training materials that have been used since the beginning of this school year, which allegedly um, have brought in changes. Um, all they have done is sort of pay lip service to the fact that inspections can be stressful, asking questions like, you know, how could you get this information while minimising stress and anxiety? But there's no rigorous, useful guide either to spotting signs of anxiety or how to stress, how to respond to it or what options might be open either to the inspectors or to school staff if, <coughs> sorry, if um, stress and anxiety are detected. And yeah, I mean, in Ruth's case, the inspectors themselves identify this in their evidence. I mean, absolutely horrifying to read some of the um, accounts that they themselves have of Ruth's response in meetings. They saw that she was distressed. Her colleagues knew she was distressed, but there was nothing, nothing was done to adapt the inspection to that, to accommodate that. Nobody was aware of this mythical creature, mm -hmm. as the coroner called it, of the option to pause an inspection, for instance. So, sorry, I mean, a long answer to your question. The training that is in place now, that was in place a year ago, is woefully inadequate to cope with the stress that Ofsted themselves acknowledge um, is caused by inspections. Mm. And Amanda Spielman's suggestion yesterday, in response to those utterly damning conclusions of the coroner, that they're going to do a day's training next week to train their inspectors. I mean, come on. I think anybody can see that just inadequate something far more fundamental is required than that uh, we, um, we will be coming to Ofsted's response to to this as well but there's something else that I'd like to get your thoughts on um, that was highlighted by the coroner and that was the rule of confidentiality that was in place at the time which meant that Ruth could have talked to other head teacher friends about the report well she couldn't talk to mm. other head she couldn't talk to other head teacher friends so there was this whole network of supported, supporting women and supported mm -hmm. women that she could have leaned on, but she wasn't allowed to. No, it was very clear in the in the guidance what what she and her colleagues were told during the inspection, what was written in the most stark terms on the draft report, you know, if you share any of the information it, um, from this draft report, it will be considered a serious breach of um, confidentiality and action will be taken. I can't remember the exact words, but, you know, that was the tone, that was the gist. Um, so in, particularly in a small primary school, I mean, Ruth, Caption Primary is a small primary school. The senior leadership team is four people, two of those were the um, deputy heads who sort of were part time. So, you know, in a school, it could be just three people who were themselves part of that inspection, who themselves were traumatized by that inspection. The idea that the only people Ruth was allowed to share that outcome with were her senior leadership team, the gov chair of governors and the local authority I'm sure anyone can see, we've talked a lot, oh, I've been talking a lot in, in about the power imbalance within um, the Ofsted system, the education system. But clearly here, Ruth, the only people Ruth was allowed to discuss the inspection result with were her employers um, or the staff that she, whom she led mm. and who were looking to her 
for leadership and guidance, who themselves were traumatized by that inspection. So actually, the people it would have been helpful for her to talk to, absolutely, her wonderful, wonderful colleagues, Reading Head teachers, whom I've come to, to know um, this last year, didn't know before, she wasn't able to discuss it with them, the people who more than anyone really could understand what it felt like and might have been able to offer her both emotional and practical. They've support. changed that. They've changed that rule now. Are you satisfied? They've kind of changed it. As the, um, the coroner said, there are still elements of that. They have loosened the confidentiality requirement, but they have still not made explicit, for mm. instance, that a head teacher can share that outcome with medical professionals. I mean, looking through um, the evidence of, of Ruth reaching out to her GP, to mental health services, and even then she felt unable to name the school, to talk about what that judgment was, even when seeking medical help. You know, so the coroner has pointed out that what, yes, there have been improvements. Ofsted have not just clarified matters, which is what they were trying to argue. They have changed the policy, having, thank goodness, recognised that that confidentiality requirement was inhumane. But it's st there are still elements of clarification that are needed to to lift that particular burden from head teachers. Now, the coroner also pointed to the current Ofsted system, which allows for the single word judgment of inadequate mm. to be applied equally to, to a school rated otherwise good, but with issues which could be remedied by the time the report was published as to a school which is dreadful in all respects. Do you think mm. single phrase judgments will change? I sincerely hope so. It has been one of, if not the sticking point, I've had many meetings now, long meetings with the Secretary of State and the Department for Education. And um, <laughs> we've had uh, some tense moments when we're both kind of saying that's our red line. So it's, you know, government policy. That's, you know, this is how they judge not just schools, but care homes, hospitals, GP practices and so on. Um, and they're not going to budge. And, and I, on the other hand, and it seems the most of the teaching profession arguing that without removing those single word judgments, many of the other tweaks that have been offered so far will be ineffective. That's the one thing that would be easy to to change and would make the most difference in one fell swoop. Get rid of the single word judgment and then many of the other um, issues around that sort of public shaming, the humiliation. Because that one word inadequate, that, that loomed mm. large, didn't it, for oh, Ruth? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, God. I mean, it's not just that it's one word, it's that word. Mm. That word. I mean, I work in education myself, higher education. We have account, you know, accountability systems and reviews and so on as well. But the idea that in education it is ever acceptable to use that word inadequate to sum something up. If I wrote on an undergraduate essay at the end of it, inadequate, however shoddy I might personally think their, their work was, I would get shot down. You know, that would not be allowed. And I and and rightly so. How can you sum up, you know, one undergraduate essay, one student essay with the word inadequate, let alone a whole school? And as Ruth felt, her whole career, her vocation, sort of destroyed with with one word and with that word. I am gonna just read out um the Ofsted statement from uh, the Chief Inspector Amanda Spielman. She said, Ruth Perry's death was a tragedy that deeply affected many people. My thoughts remain with her family, the wider mm. Caversham school community and everyone else who knew and loved her. On behalf of Ofsted, I would like to say sorry to them for the distress that Mrs Perry undoubtedly experienced as a result of our inspection. After Mrs Perry's death, we made changes to the way we work to help reduce the pressure felt by school leaders. We will do more. The coroner highlighted a number of areas of concern. We will work hard to address each of these as soon as we can, and we're starting that work straight away. Um, she was 
the, the inquest heard about the pressures Ruth felt and mm. uh, that she articulated in the time after the inspection and before her death, not only about how to face her staff and the parents after the downgrading, but also worrying about wider repercussions that the, mm. that, that word, the inadequate judgment would have had, for example, local house prices potentially falling in the area. Just huge mm. weight of responsibility. The last time you, you saw her was at, alive was on Christmas Day. How yeah. did she seem to you then? She was she was haunted. I mean, she really was from the very start of that inspection until her death. She was complete. She could think of nothing else. So she was trying very hard to put on a brave face, but it was very unconvincing. Um, you know, her children were there. My children were there. We wanted to have a fun family Christmas and we did our best, but it, yeah, Ruth's heart wasn't in it and it was very difficult for all of us. I think we need but, to talk. We did, sorry, mm. sorry. I know it's difficult. I just would like to talk about the woman behind the headlines. What was she like? She was, she was lovely. She was lovely. She was very human, unpretentious, genuine person. She had no front. Um, she went into education because she liked to do good because she liked to nurture children. I mean, the, the, she had a very holistic attitude to children's education, not just the curriculum and knowledge, but actually thinking about their broader development and creativity and extracurricular activities. She was, yeah, she was, <laughs> she was a friend to so many people. I mean, I think it's, being a head teacher is a very, very hard, isolated and isolating job. And um, I think there were probably times when Ruth just wanted to be a mum like everybody else and just, you know, live in the community like everybody else. Um, but being a head teacher always comes to that sort of level of responsibility and local celebrity even. Mm. Everybody knew her. So, um, but I think everybody knew her as a genuinely kind, well-meaning, hardworking, successful person. And this is, this is what's just so shocking about what happened to Ruth, that an inspection of a school that everybody locally knows is an absolutely excellent school, that an inspection yeah. of that school could reduce my happy, healthy, successful sister to such depth of despair. She could see no way out. Um, it's just a terrible indictment of a system that's meant to raise standards, improve lives. And she was married and had two daughters and yeah. you've taken on a huge level of responsibility as well as her sister. Um, no doubt that the death was devastating for the whole family, but you're dealing with all of this and your own grief. Yeah, it's it's not easy. Um, I do... I do think sometimes um, the fact that I have, yeah, dis well, it's not that I've decided to, to do this, to sort of campaign for a want of a better word. I don't feel like I have any choice. It's something I have to do. Something was so terribly wrong with what happened to Ruth, but within that system that I, I have to do this to put it right. But just because I can still speak with clarity about what happened and my um, analysis of what is so wrong with the system and responses to um, my calls for change. That doesn't matter that, <laughs> that doesn't mean that it's not hard. It doesn't mean that I'm not still grieving. And um, on some levels, I, you know, there's a lot of grief that still needs to come out, that a lot of my grief is still on hold because of, of doing this. 
it's yeah, it's added an extra burden, an extra layer of of complication. But but it has to be done. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to say about Amanda Spielman's comments on this programme two weeks ago? Mm. I can't say I was surprised. Amanda Spielman hasn't spoken often publicly, but every time she has, she has displayed a staggering lack of emotional intelligence. Can, can I just say what she said to Emma? Um, mm -hmm. She said there was a very sad case in the spring which has been used as a pivot to try and discredit what we do. The quality of what we do underneath has been solid for years. We have really strong feedback on our inspection framework. Mm, I expect they're getting some strong feedback now. Yes, I heard that. I heard it live. As I was just saying to you, the fact that I have been speaking on the media um, doesn't mean that I'm not still struggling with my grief. And actually hearing Amanda Spillman speak on Women's Hour was the first time that I have actually screamed. I have a counsellor, I have a grief counsellor who said, if you need to, scream. And I screamed and I screamed loud and long and it wasn't, uh, you know, expletive <laughs> laden outburst at the in crass insensitivity of what she did. It felt visceral. It felt painful. I really hope my parents weren't listening. They listened to Radio 4. I really hope they weren't listening then. It was such a kick in the guts. And just a few days before the inquest starts, and here she is again in the public media casting aspersions on me, on those like me who can see there's something wrong with the inspection system, suggesting that Ruth's death's been used as a pivot to discredit Ofsted. I mean, it's outrageous. Ofsted are doing a very good job at discrediting themselves. They don't need us to come along and do that. Ruth's death was a direct result of an Ofsted inspection. I've been trying for the last 11 months, it's 11 months ago today that Ruth took her own life to point out the fatal flaws in Ofsted's inspection system and been ignored. And that the chief inspector herself can go on, use her public voice and public platform to make such a crass and outrageous claim is just unacceptable. Well, there's a new chief inspector starting in January, Sir Martin Thank Oliver. Goodness. What's your message to him? I have a meeting in the diary to meet him very first week of his appointment in January. Um, I very much hope that he is conscious of the massive challenge he's facing. Um, I, you know, it, what is needed to respond, not just to my sister's death, as though that isn't terrible and devastating enough, but to the mental health crisis in the teaching profession, which it has exposed the outpouring of anger and upset and rage against Ofsted. Um, I hope that the new chief inspector understands the strength of feeling and the need for, re for massive change, not just for tweaks. And I, and I have to ask, how are you all? Hmm. <laughs> We're... We're struggling. We're getting by. We're, yeah, you know, we're generally a resilient bunch. So um, we're managing, but it's hard. And um, yeah, Ruth's loss is immense to all of us. And it's you know it's something that can't can't be filled. And we just have to find some way of moving on. And um, yeah, of yeah, I, I, a local a neighbour um, spoke to me quite soon after I first spoke out. A neighbour, lovely neighbour, who'd lost her son in quite traumatic circumstances, and she said to me, "I think the one one word of 
advice that um, has been most meaningful. And she just said, life has a way of pulling you forward. And um, that's just what it feels now. Life just pulls us forward, pulls us further away from that. And uh, But, it, you know, it's why it's so important that we ensure that things change so that no other family has to go through this. Um, Julia, I would like to thank you very much for speaking to me this morning on uh, Women's Hour. Thank you. That was Ruth Perry's sister, Professor Julia Waters. 84844 is the number to text um, with anything you'd like to um, talk to me about on the programme that you're hearing this morning. I am going to read out the uh, statement from the Education Secretary, Gillian Keegan. She said, my heart goes out to Ruth's family, friends and the school community. Her death was a tragedy that not only shocked the local community, but also the wider sector and beyond. It's clear from the coroner's findings that lessons need to be learned. We've worked closely with Ruth's family as well as with Ofsted to introduce key reforms and further support for our school leaders. I'm extremely grateful to Ruth's sister, Julia, and her friends for working so closely with us to introduce these changes. Ofsted is fundamental to making sure children are safe and receive the education they deserve. Together, we will look closely at the coroner's recommendations to consider further changes to make sure we have an inspection system that supports schools and teachers and ultimately secure Ruth's legacy. 84844, that text number once again. Um, Now earlier I spoke to Julia Waters, sister of the late head teacher Ruth Perry. I wanted to let you know that there is a BBC programme all about Ruth Perry which you can watch now on iPlayer. It's called The Death of a Head and if you have been affected by the issues discussed please go to the BBC Action Line website for advice and support.